and welcome to so in this one our main character is Jess and she that's the timer <laughs> scratch that I feel like I just made that part up so anyway the rest of the books I have have not come out yet but they're coming okay so now we're gonna get into everything looks crooked on this camera I don't understand why Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to part two of all the pre-orders I plan to pre-order in 2022. If you saw part one of this video, then you know I had like an hour's worth of raw footage and when I was editing it, that was a text message, when I was editing it, I realized it was just way too much for one video. So I broke it up into two parts. This is editing me in a completely different outfit, doing a new introduction to let you know that we're gonna dive into part two. And of course, I also realized while I was editing that I fully missed an entire book. So there's going to be another insert of me in this outfit later in the video talking about that book that I missed. But without further ado, let's get into it. Next up is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I read Rock, Paper, Scissors a couple months ago, January maybe, and I loved it. I really enjoy Alice Feeney's writing. I very much loved His and Hers is, I think I would say, still my favorite of her books. I want to go back to reread Sometimes I Lie because that was the I read that when it first came out and I really loved it. But for me, His and Hers is still top dog of all of her books that I've read. So Daisy Darker is the new one and it says this is a family reunion that leads to murder love it so in this one it says after years of avoiding each other daisy darker's entire family is assembling for nana's 80th birthday in nana's crumbling gothic house on a tiny tidal island i feel like reading all of these are complete tongue twisters so finally back together one last time when the tide comes in they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours already i'm in love isolated thriller nana's nana's birthday <laughs> just I'm already getting like a little bit of like a Knives Out feel, a little bit Death in the Family by Tessa Wiegert feel. So it says the family arrives, each harboring secrets. Then at the stroke of midnight, as a storm rages, Nana is found dead. Oh no, I'm just reading this for like the first time. Basically, I feel like it should go without saying, all of these books are books that I don't even care what they're about because these are the authors that I'm automatically gonna purchase for. So I didn't know that. Okay, so Nana's found dead and an hour later, the next family member follows. So there we go. So we have a very and then there were none type of a feel to it. I am less than 50 pages away from finishing Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, which I just talked about before, which is in then there were none vibes to it too. So I'm excited for this. I'm not gonna lie, I am loving this cover so much. There's so much yellow in covers this year too, which I am completely here for, but I cannot wait to dive into this one. This one sounds superb. Next up is another YA book and the third and final in a series, I believe, she's not going to change her mind on this one. This is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and this is the Inheritance Game series, which I loved. So hard to talk about this one without talking about the other ones too much. So basically, if you guys have been here for a hot minute, you've seen me talk about it. But The Inheritance Games follows a girl named Avery. She's a junior in high school. She's living with her half-sister, her mom has passed away, their dad, they have a shared father who basically abandoned them. And they're kind of down on their luck, like Avery like sleeps in her car some nights. They're just trying to like rub some pennies together. And Avery is dreaming of graduating or graduating high school, getting into college and just kind of like getting out of town. And then she gets a visit from a lawyer from Texas and they're living up in Philly. And he tells her that she has been left something in the will of this like multi gazillionaire dude down in Texas that she's never heard of before. And they go down and find out that Avery has basically inherited his entire fortune. Nobody knows why. And again, in that very knives out kind of a way, his family, Tobias Hawthorne, who is the man who died, uh, his family's not really happy about it. So he has some daughters, four grandsons, and everyone's trying to figure out why Avery. And as part of the deal, like she has to live in their giant mansion down there, but live with the family and people are contesting the will and sort of her life is at risk and there's puzzles and there's games and there's mysteries. And I just loved it so, 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 so much. And I had a really good time with book number two in the series. So again, book number three, I'm very curious to see how it ends. I believe this is gonna be a three and done. I don't know if it's gonna be a truly devious situation where 
a year or two later we're going to get a book for but I did see on Jennifer Lynn Barnes's Instagram page that there is an indie bookstore I want to say in Oklahoma I will take a look and leave any details I can in the box down below that was doing personalized pre-orders or signed pre-orders but either way it was an indie bookstore that was new to me that was doing something personalized so I might shift my pre-order to them and see what happens but or not like see what happens like what will happen is I would pre-order it and then I would get the book but you know what I mean <laughs> just like confirm what's going to happen but this was thoroughly enjoyable to me I was totally in for it I read Inheritance Games and then before the Hawthorne Legacy book number two came out last year I wound up listening to Inheritance Games on audio and then reading Hawthorne Legacy. So it was really good on audio and in book book form, but I highly recommend these. They're just great fun. Now I think it would be hard pressed to pick which book I am most looking forward to coming out in the coming months, but I have to say when I saw this book was coming out, there definitely was like a scream that followed it of pure excitement. And it's The Winners by Frederick Bachman, and it's the third book in the Beartown series, which I feel like we've been waiting forever for, even though I feel like I only read Beartown a few years ago, 2018 maybe? Anyway, this is book number three, and I couldn't be more excited about it. This doesn't come out until October, but it's okay. It's totally okay. When it comes out, I'm going to be ready for it, and it also gives me plenty of time to reread Beartown and reread re Us Against You. So Beartown is probably one of my favorite books ever, and I was just so blown away by Frederick Bachman as a writer, the story of this, and Us Against You did not disappoint in any way. If anything, it only made me love the story and the characters even more. And what this man can do with words in terms of telling a story and evoking emotions and bringing such pure emotion to the page from joy to heartbreak to devastation to grief to pain to love, just what he can do with words, I, I, like, I can't even express in words what his words make me feel. But this man is gifted like beyond belief, just absolutely brilliant writing. So it says two years have passed since the events that no one wants to think about. Everyone tried to move on, but there's something about this place that prevents it. The residents continue to grapple with life's big questions. What is family? What is community? And what, if anything, are we willing to sacrifice in order to protect them? So I'm guessing this takes place two years after Beartown versus like the book Beartown versus us at us Against You takes place. So in a nutshell, Beartown is about this small town called Beartown in Sweden. And it is in the forest, this very rural community. And this town basically relies on this hockey team, literally for survival. So this junior hockey team is like on the cusp of winning the championship. And it might help or should help attract new business, new opportunities to the town. It will help their flailing economy. And then it also sort of gives them those bragging rights and like that, that pride that they beat other towns in the area and that they beat other teams in the area. And basically like these hockey players are celebrities. They are all the swagger you can possibly imagine. They are gods in this town and think about any sport in any high school in any college even on a national level like they are just revered and can do no wrong so in bear town they are you know about to go into this championship season and like everything is absolutely amazing and there's a party one night and the star player of the team after this party is accused of sexually assaulting a girl at the party and this news literally divides the town and you start to see people picking sides, people making assumptions, people coming to the defense of the player, people coming to the defense of the girl who accused him, and how this literally divides the entire town and you see this community break over this incident that happened. And you see how the players react, you see how the community reacts, you see how her friends react, the families, the parents, everyone. And it literally affects everyone in the town. And it is, again, like so powerful, so well done, so gut-wrenching. And for me personally, it just brought up 
so many questions and so many things where you think you would do in a certain situation or how you would act and how you would react to things. And it really just shines such an interesting light on athletes and sort of that hero worship we have for athletes and the bravery of someone to come forward and why people don't come forward after they're sexually assaulted. And it's just such a powerful book. I don't know how else to describe it, but so beautifully written, such a great series. I am beyond excited that there's another book and I just can't even wait. I can't even wait. I can't even wait to see what happens next. Next up is Outside by Ragnar Jonasson. So you guys know I discovered his writing in 2021 and fortunately he has a backlist <laughs> like to fill a shelf which I've basically done and he has a new book coming out. So this comes out at the end of April in the UK so I did order the book depository version of it because A I like the cover better and B I don't want to wait till like July when it comes out in the US so I ordered it and this one says four friends one night not everyone will come out alive. Hmm. So we have a deadly Icelandic snowstorm love it four friends seek shelter in an abandoned hunting lodge miles from help and knowing they will die out in the cold they break in hoping to wait out the storm until morning but nothing can prepare them for what's inside with no other option they're forced to spend a long and terrifying night in the cabin watching as intently and silently as they themselves are being watched as the night darkens old secrets spill into the light and tensions rise between the four friends Soon it's clear that what they've discovered in the cabin is far from the only mystery lurking there, nor the only thing to be afraid of. So I still have to read The Mist, which is the third book, which is why I'm doing this in the Holda series, but I'm also kind of savoring it. But I have to say, I just completely fell in love with his writing. He's another author who brilliantly just evokes so much emotion on the page with his words. His writing is tight, it's succinct, it keeps you like flipping pages without being like, page turny thriller reaction very character driven i'm completely here for it and as i'm looking at the book depository page as i film this 46 days to go when this one is gonna get released and will come my way next up is a book that i have an arc of already and it's things we do in the dark by jennifer hillier so i a thousand percent will be buying a finished full copy of this or like a fully finished copy of this so i haven't read it yet but I am just so over the moon excited for this one. And she just can do no wrong. Like I said, I've talked about her so many times before you guys know, and I love her to pieces. So this comes out in July and it says in the dark monsters are real. Why do I feel like, oh, it's sort of like the um, Jennifer McMahon. There's a similar line to that. Um, on the back of that book. And so this one says, when Paris Peralta is arrested in her own bathroom, covered in blood, holding a straight razor, her celebrity husband in the bathtub, she knows she's in serious trouble. In the dark, it never happened. But as bad as it looks, the arrest is not what worries her the most. With the unwanted media attention now surrounding her, it's only a matter of time before someone from her old life recognizes her and destroys everything she's worked so hard to build. In the dark, she could be anyone because Paris has a dark past and she'll do anything to keep it hidden. So I have already seen a few people who dove right into this when it arrived and are loving it. They're saying it's her best book yet. That is a pretty high bar in my book. So I have read five of her six books before this one. So I just have The Butcher left, which is up there. And I'm going to read The Butcher and then I'm going to go into this one. And I've said this so many times before, so I'm sorry if you guys watch me and hear me say the same things over and over again. But I'm really excited to see where she goes in this book. So Jennifer Hillier is another author who did not have a book come out last year. The pandemic obviously impacted a lot of people's ability to write, whether they were caring for their families, whether there were shifts in their creativity. I really respect the authors who took the time they needed, who recognized that maybe their creativity wasn't flowing or they weren't in the zone or they didn't like what they were writing and waited until they had something that they were excited about, that they were passionate about and put out a book that they are proud to put out and I she is worth the wait for me as much as I was chomping at the bit the upside was I had a huge backlist to get through so I was okay but I'm really excited for this and like I said I've heard so much great pre-buzz already and I'm really really excited for it but I will be pre-ordering a final copy of this book as well so I can have it and I'm super excited for it I just love her to pieces and like I said if you guys are not already reading Jennifer Hillier like come on like what are you guys doing what are you doing 
So that's going to do it for pre-orders so far, which is not to, that's a lie. Oh my God, Taylor Jenkins Reid. How did I forget Taylor Jenkins Reid? I'm horrified. I almost forgot this one. Taylor Jenkins Reid has a new book coming out. Carrie Soto is back. Carrie Soto was a character in Malibu Rising. According to Taylor Jenkins Reid, this is the fourth and final book in this universe that she was writing, which is Evelyn, Daisy, Malibu Rising, and now Carrie Soto. So I am so excited for this book. You guys know I am a Taylor Jenkins Reid super fan. I have read all of her books. I am obsessed with her as a reader and as a writer. I think she's just the best thing ever. And like basically everybody else on this list, she could write a phone book and I would be reading it. So in this one, it says, this is a powerful novel about the cost of greatness. A legendary athlete attempts a comeback when the world considers her past her prime. So Malibu Rising took place in the 80s and here we are in the 90s. And I had listened to, of course, many interviews that Taylor Jenkins Reid has done talking about how she would be writing sort of a book kind of not like per decade necessarily, but like Evelyn, like Evelyn was sort of the, I don't know if it was like late 40s, 50s to present day, but Daisy was really kind of like 60s, 70s. And then we kind of end in the 80s in Malibu Rising, even though we go back in time to see Mick from Daisy and from Daisy, or Evelyn and Daisy, <laughs> so it all like crosses over each other. So in this one, our present day grounding is 1994. And it says six years after her retirement, Carrie finds herself sitting in the stands of the 1994 US Open, watching her record be taken from her by a brutal, stunning player named Nikki Chan. So Carrie was having an affair with Nina's husband in Malibu Rising. That's who she is. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like Carrie in Malibu Rising. I liked her, not because she was having an affair with Nina's husband, but the last time we see Carrie in Malibu Rising, I loved her, was such a fan of hers. And I am excited to see where this story goes. And I'm excited that this is the character that Taylor Jenkins Reid picked to sort of pluck from the universe to give her her story. So it says, Carrie Soto is fierce and her determination to win at any cost has not made her popular. But by the time she retires from tennis, she's the best player the world has ever seen. She shattered every record, claimed 20 Grand Slam titles, and if you ask Carrie, she is entitled to every one. She sacrificed nearly everything to become the best, with her father Javier as her coach. A former champion himself, Javier has trained her since the age of two. So after seeing her record get taken from her in 1994, she has decided that she is going to come out of retirement at 37 years old, which we all know in the world of tennis, and a world of a lot of sports, is very much past her prime, and she's going to be coached by her father for one last year in an attempt to reclaim her record. Even if the sports media says they never liked the battle axe anyway, even if her body doesn't move as fast as it did, and even if it means swallowing her pride to train with a man she once almost opened her heart to, Bo Huntley. Like her, he has something to prove before he gives up the game forever. So it says, in spite of it all, Carrie Soto is back for one epic final season hence the name of the book. So not gonna lie, I literally just got a chill when I read that and I'm so excited. There is just, again, I feel like something, like this list is full of, char of characters, this list is full of authors who either keep me flipping pages because their stories are so amazing or whose words evoke such emotion in me. And there is just something about each one of these and I feel like this is probably the most like non thrillery only list. Like I feel like when I'm making recommendations, it's always thrillers or I talk so much about thrillers, but there's some YA on this and there's obviously like a little bit of fantasy in this and there's some contemporary in this and there's obviously thrillers in this. So it hits on all kind of the bells and whistles and stuff for me, but I'm just so excited for this book, you guys. I'm just so, so excited. Okay, it's editing me back with the book that I forgot about the first time I filmed the video. So here it is, it's Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. So I had talked about a podcast I listened to however many videos ago where she was talking about 56 days and the success of it and like all this great, exciting, fun stuff. And she was also talking about her new book that's coming out this year, which is Runtime. So this is set on a movie set of a horror thriller movie. 
So I'm automatically just like, yes. Don't even know, like don't even need to know anything else. Totally fine. But I'm gonna read a little bit about it so that you guys know what it's about. So the tagline says, movie making can be murder. The project, Final Draft, a psychological horror being filmed at a house deep in the forest, miles from anywhere in the wintry wilds of West Cork. The lead, former soap star Adele Rafferty, has stepped in to replace the original actress at the very last minute. She can't help but hope that this opportunity is going to be her really big break, and she knows she was lucky to get it, after what happened the last time she was on a set. Dun 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 dun! The problem, something isn't quite right about Final Draft. When the strange goings-ons in the script start happening on set two, Adele begins to fear that the real horror lies off the page. So it sounds very life imitating art. It's giving me Scream vibes, of course. I love, I know Scream 3 was not the best one, but I loved the concept, even though the execution wasn't totally great, but Parker Posey was everything. But I'm kind of getting that feeling of like filming the horror movie, they are at the horror set, I definitely feel like there was, I'm gonna blank on it. Like there's definitely been creepy things that have happened in movies, set at horror movies, but Scream is what's on my brain right now. But I'm totally down for it. I really enjoy Katherine Ryan Howard's writing. I've only read one of her books, so I say that like I talk about her all the time or like I read all of her stuff, but I love her, like I loved The Nothing Man. I need to read the rest of her stuff, but this one just sounds so, 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 so up my alley. Basically, I feel like I am in such a horror movie mode right now too. So just like give me all the horror movies, give me all the behind the scenes, the actors, the writers, the directors, the serial killers, like give it all to me and I am here for it. So I cannot wait for this one to come out. Also loving the covers on this one, UK and US covers. So this is gonna be like a Sophie's Choice moment, I think for me. So that's gonna do it for the pre-orders as of now that I'm planning to get. So there are still opportunities for new books to get announced. I don't know if Vera Kurian is gonna have a new book coming out this year. So she wrote Never Saw Me Coming. I know she's working on a book, but I don't know if she's gonna have one that comes out in 2022, which to me is an auto buy. Uh, Amanda J. Atisa, who wrote My Sweet Girl, is another auto buy who I'm looking out for. And there's definitely, I think I'm gonna do a video about, so for me, there's a difference between auto buy and auto read and what that distinction is and sort of how I make the distinction between the two. But all of the people I talked about today have just become favorite authors of mine or have been longstanding favorite authors of mine. And in this case, I definitely took a leap of faith on a book and it completely paid off. So you just never know. You never know where, you, where the next great book might come from. But let me know if you guys do pre-orders. I think one of the things that I appreciate about it is like when I pre-ordered these two books. I did this, I think in December, I want to say it was, because there was a cutoff because they're personalized. And not that I forgot about them, but then all of a sudden when I got the shipping notice in February, I was like, oh, like prizes are coming. And it was like the same thing when I bought this. And I was like, oh, look, a bar, like a prize is coming to me. So it's sort of like giving yourself a gift in advance, which is always very exciting. And then, like I said, I also just wanna be able to support some indies where I can, and I wanna support the authors whenever I can. And as much as I used to have such a ritual of like going to the bookstore on the first day when a book would come out and like get it and hold it and all that stuff too, which I'm not above doing, I also wanna kind of do the pre-orders and help out where I can. And maybe it's all just me justifying buying books in advance. Could be that too, could be that too. So let me know if you guys are pre-ordering anything. Let me know if there's anything I missed on this list that you think that I would love and should be pre-ordering. And as always, we can talk about it down below. But thank you guys so much for hanging out today. And I will see you in another video very soon. And until then, take care everybody, bye.